Okay, now we're, we're working with the same data set that we went through with frequency distributions, making frequency distributions for each group, and um, figuring out the central tendencies, the measures of central tendencies for each of these two groups. So remember we've got two groups, people are randomly assigned to either learn some breathing techniques to deal with their pain, or else they're in a control condition where basically there's just a TV in their room as a means of distraction to deal with their pain. And then they're giving their pain levels on a 0 to 10 scale, 10 being a extreme pain. And so we want to see if there's differences between the two. One of the ways to look at that was when we were figuring out the central tendency. Another important thing is to look at the variability. That is, how close together are the scores clustered together, how far apart, how much of a spread there is between the scores. What we're going to focus on here is just on uh, variance and standard deviation, you're going to learn sum of squares. So we're not going to deal with range or interquartile range in, in this particular lecture uh, video. So w one way in which we could do this that, that you might think of as being an intuitive way to, to look at this is we could take the mean for a particular group. So let's focus on the TV data here. And we calculated that mean before was 6. And we could subtract 6 from each of the scores and then get deviation scores for it. So if we subtracted 6, give negative 1 there, positive 1, 2, negative 1, positive 1, negative 2, negative 3, 1, 3, and negative 1. Okay, If we add this up, you go through and add this up, uh, it adds up to be 0. It always adds up to be 0. Okay, Because the, we're subtracting the mean from it, the mean is in the middle part of the distribution uh, for this, and so uh, whenever we subtract the mean from these scores, it's always going to add up to be 0. 0 is not very informative to us as a measure of variability. What we can do, though, is take each of these uh, deviation scores and square them. Okay, so we have squared deviation scores. So if we go through, go and do that for each of these deviation scores, you'll see our scores here. And if we go and we, we look through and we add these up, we have 10, 20, 30, 32. Suddenly now we have a, a score of 32, which is a little more informative than a score of 0. What we've just calculated here is what we call the sum of squares. We use SS as a, uh, to signify that as the symbol for that. Sum of squares, so our sum of squares here equal 32. And the, form, the definitional formula, what we just used was the definitional formula for that, looks like this. We took each score subtracted the mean from it, we squared it, and then we added all those up. Okay, that was the sum of squares. So, the, in, a, in a little bit I'll show you the computational formula. Usually we don't use this definitional formula uh, as much because rarely do we have a nice round number for the mean. And so it gets a little more cumbersome to use when we're looking at two decimal places out and subtracting that score from, from each of these. So we have what's called a computational formula. That's a li little easier to work with. But I wanted to show you the definitional formula because I want you to have, have something concrete in your head about what the sum of squares is. Because you're going to see this throughout the class. The sum of squared deviations from the mean. So these are the squared deviations, and we sum those up to get this score of 32. Okay? Now the sum of squared deviations by itself isn't extraordinarily informative to us either. What we might think of what we want to do is get an average of that then. That average is what we call the variance. And here's a symbol for that. This is lowercase sigma. That's as good as my Greek gets for writing. Lowercase sigma squared. And that stands for the population variance. Sum of squares divided by n. Okay, we're getting an average for this. 32 divided by 10. 3.2 is our variance. Right? Now, what we're in essence really interested in is what we call the standard deviation. So that's just lowercase sigma here. 
and this is just a symbol for standard deviation. Don't let the Greek throw you. And um, and for this, this is our measure of the typical deviation from the mean. That's what we care about. This is our average square deviation from the mean. We don't usually think in terms of square deviation. So, so we're looking for the typical deviation from the mean. How would we get that? We would take this. This is a square deviation. If we get the square root of that, then we need, we would um, we would have the typical deviation from the mean. We get rid of the the squaring that we did before. So we have. 3.2, we get the square root of that, 1.79 with rounding, okay? So we've got our population variance, we've got our population standard deviation. We're calling this population, um, this, this is what we'd calculate if all we care about is this group of people who are in this particular condition, okay? That's a, the total group of people that we're interested in. Oftentimes, though, what we want to do is generalize the data. That is, we've got, we might say we have a sample of 10 people who are in this condition. We want to generalize it to all people who would be in that particular condition. Our symbols change a little bit when we're looking at samples. So again, this was for populations. If we're looking at samples, we have lowercase s. We're back to the Roman alphabet here. Uh, lowercase s. And the, the formula changes just slightly. We just divide by n minus 1 instead. The n minus 1 is a correction for this. And so if you, you think about this, if we had a distribution of IQ scores where the mean is 100, standard deviation is 15, and if we were to get a sample um, of n equals 10 from that, our scores are going to all be kind of around in here, right? They're going to be right around the mean, what we'd expect. We'd get a few high scores, we'd get a few low scores. This is about where it would be at. You'll notice that the variability for the sample um, is not as wide um, as the variability is for the total population. So the sample variability is not going to be a, uh, a good enough estimate of what the actual population variability is. Our correction for that is divide by n minus 1. And you'll notice n minus 1 is, is an elegant correction for it because it, it, the larger our sample size, if we had 100 instead of uh, a sample size of 10, suddenly dividing by 99 rather than 100 suddenly isn't as big of a correction and it shouldn't be anymore because we have a larger sample from which we're working from. Okay, so for our set of data, we're now taking 32 divided by 9, and so 3.56 with rounding would be our measure rather than 3.2, so you'll notice there's a, a larger variability, that a, a little more variability that exists for the variance for our measure. And for the standard deviation, Again, dividing by n minus 1, we just get the square root. So if we get the square root of this, equals, with rounding, 1.89. So our typical deviation gets to be a little larger than what we had with the, uh, with the population variance. Right, and you'll notice here, for each of these, the 1.79 for our set of data here, that does look like it's about the typical deviation from the mean. We have a lot of ones or negative ones, but we have some twos and threes in here. One set, 1.79 does look like a good average, if you will, or typical deviation from the mean. Next, what I want to show you, so I, what I showed you here is the definitional formula for calculating the sum of squares. Now what I'd like to show you is the, the computational formula for the sum of squares for a computational formula, sum of x squared minus the sum of x squared divided by n. Okay, so let's walk through this formula. Let's use the same set of data. Let's just focus on the TV um, set of data for this, for, for figuring out the, the computational formula. And so we're going to take each score, that this says we're going to take each score and square it, and we're going to add up those squared scores. So, 5 squared is 25, plus 7 squared is 49, so we're adding those together. 
8 squared, 64, plus 25, plus 49, plus 16, plus 9, plus 49, plus 81, plus 25. 392 is our sum of the x squareds. Notice again, all we did was took each score, squared it, and we kept adding them up. Next, this one is the sum of x squared. So first, what we do, we do it in parentheses first, and so we sum up all the x's. And we did this when we calculated the mean, and when we sum them all up, we got 60. Okay, just add up each of the scores, and that's what gave us our mean.